Search engine optimization is important, especially when you're trying to rank your articles, products, job listing, or whatever on search engines. But many beginners make a lot of mistakes with their SEO efforts. And by avoiding these mistakes, your website can rank higher on search engines, attract more visitors. So without further ado, let me share what those mistakes are. Let's go. Hey, it's Jack here from RankMath, the WordPress SEO plugin that gives your business the best chance of beating your competitors on search engines. We put out a lot of videos and practical SEO guides to make the complicated search engine world easy for you. So consider subscribing to the channel with bells on to boost your search ranking. Now, what I'm sharing here are 11 of the most common SEO mistakes made by beginners. I was guilty of some of them too when I was new to SEO. So I hope with this video, you can avoid these costly mistakes so that your journey with your blog or website will be a smooth sailing one. Mistake number eight is what holds most websites back from reaching their potential. But let's start with the first and the biggest mistake. When you start as a writer or blogger for your website, it can be tempting to compete with bigger sites by targeting competitive keywords or topic, right? Who wouldn't want to rank for keywords with lots of traffic, right? With traffic, it builds authority and ultimately leads to more sales. However, this is often a bad idea for several key reasons. First, you don't have the experience or expertise to create content that truly competes with high quality writing that is commonly found on more established blogs or websites. Second, targeting a highly competitive keyword or topic will likely mean that you face fierce competition not only from other bloggers or websites, but also from big brands who have the financial resources, capability, and manpower to quickly rank in search results. This means that even if you somehow do manage to achieve top rankings, they will likely vanish just as fast if big sites start competing for those same keywords. Thus, it is rarely worth the effort when you're just starting out as a beginner. Instead, it is better to focus on finding less competitive keywords and topics that will allow you to build your audience naturally through quality content creation. This will give you a stronger foundation for success over the long term. We recommend using tools like Ahrefs to give you insights into the topics you are targeting. It has a scoring system to judge the keyword difficulty based on the number of referring domains it needs to rank at the top. The lower the score, the easier it is to rank. If you want more free methods to research topics and keywords, check out this other video on the 23 best WordPress SEO tips. The link is in the description as well. Now, since we're talking about targeting the right keywords, it leads me to another SEO mistake to avoid, which is to avoid writing long form content. Okay, I might get a lot of hits on this because it goes against most of the SEO tips you hear out there, but hear me out. If you have been researching for SEO tips, you would have come across some experts talking about writing the best content out there, or in other words, skyscraper content or ridiculously long content, which includes writing an article that is 3,000 words or more, providing the most valuable information on a given topic. But let me ask you a question. When was the last time you actually read an entire 3,000 words to 6,000 words article? For me, it was literally five years ago. Now, if I want long form content, I would prefer for it to be delivered to me in videos or podcasts because I can listen to it while traveling. I won't want to strain my eyes for some information. Plus, most long form content that are ranked at the top are usually content from high quality websites, which means you're competing with sites that have many quality backlinks that are usually well written, well researched, and tons of resources are used in content creation. So as an individual, as a beginner, Writing a piece of long-form content that is high quality, well-researched, could take weeks, if not months. And the question is, what if it doesn't rank? This usually happens for new sites, which means no traffic is coming to your site. You won't get natural backlinking, which means your site has low authority and which means Google would trust those authority sites more than yours, even if your content is better written than theirs. It's a chain of events that are stacking against you. You have wasted your time creating the content and you're not getting results. Is it good to write long form content when you're a beginner? I'll leave it up to you to decide. So our recommendation is to do proper keyword research as we have discussed earlier and utilize Content AI, which is our proprietary AI system that analyzes the content that are currently ranked on the search engines based on the targeted keyword 
and the location you have provided. Once Content AI analyzes the web, it will suggest a range for the length of your content because other websites that are ranking at the top fall within the range. With this information, you know how much effort you need to get ranked. Focus on topics that gives you the most chance of ranking with the least amount of effort, especially when you are a beginner. If you want to target more competitive keywords that require a long form content, great. But wait for your website to have more authority. You will eventually get there as you focus on ranking for short form topics. By that, I mean around 1,000 to 1,800 words. I'm pretty sure you can find those topics in almost any niche. Now, here's how we define quality content. If the title of your content is, for example, do I need talent to play guitar? And you write a sentence, no, you don't need talent to play guitar. And you continue to write about how beginners can learn guitar. This is an actual problem I've encountered when reviewing content from beginners. But do you see the disparity between the title of the article and the actual content? People who are searching for the keyword, do I need talent to play guitar, are typically beginners who find it hard to play guitar and they're adopting themselves. So what they're expecting is credible information that will convince them that you don't need talent to play guitar. You should be talking about some doubts that people have when playing guitar, like am I smart enough to play a guitar or should I play guitar if I have short hands and fingers? And basically the mindset beginners should have to overcome all obstacles. The people who are searching for, do I need talent to play guitar? Are not expecting a tutorial on how to play guitar step by step. So understanding the intent of the focus keyword you're targeting is of utmost importance. Once you're off topic, you won't rank. So before you write content, determine who you're writing for. You may want to read some articles that are ranked at the top and try to understand who they are writing for. Once you nail it on the intent of the search term, you craft content answering the search terms specifically. That's how we call quality content. Let's face it, we have been there before. If you have not done any link building for your site, Consider yourself lucky that you're starting on the right foot. Now, not all link building is bad, but low quality or shady link building could destroy your website entirely. You might have come across some shady link building services that promised thousands of links for a low price. It sounds too good to be true, right? Big mistake if you use them. Not only using such a service will get you penalized by Google, but it will also result in low quality links that won't do anything to improve search engine ranking. So save yourself some headache and money. If you want to do link building, cool, you can do it. Either do it naturally by writing high quality content that other blogs and websites in your niche actually want to read and link to, or do Haro outreach through this website help a reporter out. News and media outlets reporters are constantly looking for credible sources to link to. So get on a platform and pitch your content or hire someone who has experience in Haro outreach to do the job for you. But the key here is creating quality content and your target audience are not people on social media or people searching for information. You need to write content targeting people who owns blogs and websites in or related to your niche because those are the people who can link back to you. It makes sense, right? No matter how great your content is, if no websites are willing to link to you because they view you as a competition, it is hard to grow authority, especially when you are a beginner. I mean, if we were back in the 2000s, Keyword stuffing was actually an effective SEO strategy, but after the Google Panda update in February 2011, Google Hummingbird update in August 2013, and many other algorithm updates that follow suit, keyword stuffing is now a mistake you should avoid at all costs. For example, the target keyword I want to rank for is how to lose weight effectively. So I'll write something like here's how to lose weight effectively. Eat healthy food, drink more water, exercise regularly. That's how to lose weight effectively. It sounds simple, but they actually work. A client came to me and asked how to lose weight effectively. And that's what I shared exactly 
on how to lose weight effectively. You get the idea? You cram as many targeted keywords in a sentence and you continue to do so throughout the content. First and foremost, keyword stuffing is extremely unintuitive for site visitors. People are looking for valuable, engaging content that speaks to their needs and interests without the fluff. They don't want to sift through a sea of generic keywords in order to find what they are looking for. So to avoid keyword stuffing and actually succeeding in your content creating efforts, use content AI. On top of suggesting the length of content, it also analyzes the web and suggests the keywords that should be added to your content. It will also suggest how many of each keyword should be added to your content. That way you will avoid overusing a particular keyword in your article. Another common SEO mistake is the improper use of header tags as a way to style content. It might be aesthetically pleasing, but it's actually bad for SEO. When I was new to SEO, I used H3 tag to style quotes. I used H1 text on links to make it more visible. Looking back, it is funny how it all began for me. So the rule of thumb is to view heading tags in a hierarchy. There should only be one H1 tag on any pages of your website. Take it that H1 is the title of the book, and then H2 heading tags further elaborates the purpose of the book. In other words, the chapters of the book. Following that, H3 tags go in detail for each of the H2 tags. When you're reading a chapter in a book, there are headings in the chapter, and those are the H3 tags of your articles. H4 supports H3, H5 supports H4, you get the idea. Never have a H4 heading tag within the H2 if there is no presence of H3. You got to follow the hierarchy of heading tags. Having all tags on your images is an SEO practice that still stands today. However, if you are using the WordPress editor, there is a high tendency that you will miss adding the alt tags. Let me give you an example. If you are on other tabs when you are uploading an image, it will not remind you to add an alt text. You have to click on the image and go to the settings where you can add the alt text here. It is so easy to forget about adding alt text to your images. Although we do have an SEO audit that checks if you have your focus keyword on one of your image alt attributes, but that's just on one image. What about the alt text for others? So to solve that, we recommend using RankMath as your core SEO plugin because we have this image SEO module where you can set the file name of your image as the alt text by default. So even if you forgot to add your alt text, like in this example, if you go to the source code, this is the image link and this is the file name, you can see that the alt text added for you even if you forgot to add an alt text for your images. This is just one of the things RankMath does for you in the background to help you adhere to the SEO best practices. But there is a lot that we do, so we highly recommend that you use RankMath as your core SEO plugin. There are a number of reasons why it is bad not to focus on the site structure from the start. To begin with, having a proper site structure gives your site more topical relevance. With a clear site structure, you can ensure that your content is logically organized around the topics, making it more targeted and relevant for both users and search engines. For example, if your website is in the WordPress niche, you could have high-level categories such as web hosting, WordPress themes, WordPress plugins, and then within one of the main categories, say the web hosting category, you could have shared hosting, VPS hosting, dedicated hosting, and within each of these subcategories, you could be writing hosting reviews, talk about how to choose the best hosting, talking about the specs, and basically geeking out about everything related to the subcategory. A good site structure is the interlink or in other words, adding internal links throughout these articles because of their topical relevance. Do not link to any other pages in different categories unless necessary. Blindly writing content without considering site structure is like taking a shot in the dark. By neglecting site structure, you're essentially guessing which keywords people might be searching for rather than focusing on what really matters, which is providing high quality, engaging content that truly resonates with your target audience. And since Google will rank pages based on their relevance to other pages on the website, as well as external linking signals, creating content blindly is not likely to earn you any brownie points with search engines. 
In short, failing to focus on site structure from the start can undermine all your other SEO efforts and limit the reach and impact of your website. So if you want to succeed in ranking your content, your articles in today's competitive search engine world, make sure to prioritize site structure every step of the way. RankMath has an internal link suggestion feature to let you know what other pages under the same category you should link to. You can choose either the titles or focus keywords option so that RankMath will search for internal linking opportunities based on the titles of your articles or the focus keywords you have added to rank math. Personally, I like the titles option, but you should try both options over a period to figure which is the best option for you. To make this work, select one of your articles as the pillar content, which means the most important article of the selected category. And whenever you write a new article and you have selected a category, Rank Math will suggest a list of related articles for you to link to. We are coming up with a video that talks about site structure on our channel, so make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And if you are liking what you have seen and heard so far, do us a little favor and smash that thumbs up button. That way we know you are actually liking this type of content and we will continue to create more for you. Anyway, let's continue. A great way to optimize your website for search engines is to add external links to your content, which means in your article, you're adding a link to the piece of content from another website. External links serve a number of purposes such as directing users to valuable and relevant information, they allow visitors to learn more about related topics, and they help search engines understand the context of your articles. However, if you are not careful with the content you are linking to, it might negatively impact your website. For example, when users click on an external link from your website and it doesn't lead them to where they expect or that external content turns out not to be useful at all, they will immediately look elsewhere for their information. This leads to a poorer user experience which may lead to a poorer performance on search ranking. Also, if you're not careful who you're linking to, you may end up linking to some websites that are a part of link farms. They are groups of websites that are created solely with the purpose of linking out to other websites through their own content. They may seem legitimate in a glance, so you have to further analyze their website to ascertain its credibility. When in doubt, do not link to them. Only link out to, for example, known leaders or websites in the industry or niche. Now, let me show you something about content AI again because I think it is super helpful to content creators in general. If you're optimizing your content for this particular focus keyword and you want your content to rank globally, not only will our AI system provide you with the suggested content length, the recommended keywords to use and its quantity, it will also suggest to you which page or pages on the web you should link to. All the links that appear here will be high quality links. And if you are using RankMath Pro, you can even add an about or mention schema on the external links, telling search engines that this external link is either directly related to the main topic, which you will use the about schema, or if it relates to a subtopic of your article, that's where you will use the mention schema. To learn more about the about and mention schema, you can check out this knowledge base article we have put together. So to maximize the benefits of adding external links to your content while avoiding potential negative impacts on your SEO rankings, you should carefully consider the quality and relevance of each link you choose to include in your article. Only link to websites that offer truly valuable and relevant information and make sure that the links you include are placed in a way that makes sense to your readers. By taking these precautions, you can ensure that adding external links to your content will actually improve your SEO results. More and more people are searching for things, consuming content, and buying products on their mobile devices. So it is essential that websites are able to display well on smaller screens. Without careful attention to mobile compatibility, your site runs the risk of being overlooked or ignored by users on the go. And this lack of engagement can lead to poor performance on searches and a lower overall ranking. In order to avoid losing valuable traffic, it is important to make sure that all aspects of your websites are finely tuned and ready to meet the needs of modern web servers on a variety of devices. After all, Google has made it clear that they reward websites with a good user experience. Nowadays, there are so many WordPress themes that are mobile-friendly by default, and if you're still using mobile-unfriendly themes, that's on you. So make sure that you are using a mobile-friendly theme. 
Now, a quick note is that before you publish any content, try viewing the draft version of it on your phone. Make sure that all the elements are visible and there aren't any awkward misalignment or overlapping of elements. If there are, make sure you fix them before publishing. If you're like most people, you probably take website speed for granted. After all, what's a few seconds here and there? But when it comes to SEO, website speed is actually quite important. Firstly, site speed is officially a part of the ranking factor called page experience, and it uses metrics from Core Web Vitals to justify the page experience of a site. In simple terms, if your site is low, you're probably not getting ranked as highly as you could be. Secondly, people are impatient. If your site takes too long to load, they are likely to click away and find another site that is faster. And once they are gone, it is likely that they will come back. And finally, slow sites frustrates users. I'm pretty sure you'd know what I mean. That's why we at RankMath are obsessed with site speed. We are the most lightweight WordPress SEO plugin on the market. We do not have a negative impact on your site speed performance. And most importantly, we give you tools to easily analyze the site speed of your pages. Just visit any pages of your website and you will see a status bar at the top. Don't worry, your site visitors will not see this. If you want to hide this, you can do so by clicking on this up arrow. And if you want to remove this feature entirely on your other pages, just click on the cross. What's important is the page speed. Click on this icon and it will prompt the loading speed of the page you are on. To top it all off, we have created a separate video to help you speed up your WordPress site. You'll see how obsessed we are in terms of site speed. All we care about is the speed performance of your site. I hope it helps. That's it. I hope that you have learned something in this video. We sincerely hope that by knowing these mistakes, you can avoid them so that your website can reach its fullest potential without any hiccups. Please give us a like if you find this video helpful. And if you're making any of these mistakes, make sure that you correct them right away. As if anything, there is no substitute for experience. The more you experiment and learn from your mistakes, the better your results will be. If you need help with solving any SEO issues, leave a comment down below or reach out to our support team. We are more than happy to help. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more SEO and business knowledge. This is Jack from RankMath. I'll see you in the next video.